Join me as I dive into the terrifying, dreamlike world of Silent Hill, ranking the top 10 scariest locations ever, guaranteed to send shivers down your spine. Silent Hill is a franchise that has left a permanent mark on the horror genre, and for good reason. Its eerie atmosphere, coupled with the sense of psychological unease, has made it a staple in the world of survival horror. But what makes Silent Hill truly stand out is its ability to create locations that are not only terrifying, but also hauntingly beautiful. But what makes a location truly horrifying? Recall how you felt while experiencing an extremely terrifying dream you had in the past. Where were you and what did you see? What were you feeling? Did any of it make sense? To give you an example of this, let me describe one of the most oddly terrifying dreams I once had. I was on a school playground surrounded by darkness. All I could see around me were the typical things you would find at a school playground, such as a swing set, slide, teeter totter, and a merry-go-round. I did not know why I was there, but I knew I needed to escape. I felt a heavy presence around me. I was also paranoid that someone was watching me from a short distance away. As I walked closer to where I thought the exit was, a silver figure appeared, and suddenly I became to realize that the figure wanted to kill me. I was chased by this thing for what felt like forever. It was quiet, fast, and persistent. It knew where I was and kept coming after me. I ran around the playground equipment, jumped, slid, but no matter what I did, I could not escape. I tripped and fell and the silver figure approached, rose its foot, and exerted all its energy to smash my head in until it was flat. I woke up with a sweat and a sudden fear of dying. Ultimately, I was relieved to find out that it was just a dream. Is it then that Silent Hill is just a dream, manifested by the deepest and darkest psychological roots of the human mind? Disclaimer: This video is heavily biased with my own thoughts and opinions. I encourage everybody to be respectful of not only mine, but others in the community. At the end of this video, I would love to hear your thoughts, rankings, and any other fun facts or experiences you once had. With that out of the way, let us begin. The Luca Lake and town from Silent Hill 2 comes in at number 10 on our list of the top 10 scariest locations in Silent Hill due to its extremely fog-like state and eeriness exacerbated by the haunting sounds coming from every direction. Whether it be the crunchy footsteps or growling sounds following behind you in the dense forest leading to the town, the blaring static sounds from your radio as you approach twisted monsters on the streets, or even having to row a boat across the mysterious lake surrounded by fog, the Luca Lake and the town of Silent Hill are sure to leave even the most seasoned fans of this franchise with an uncomprehensible sense of dread and terror. Lakeside Amusement Park from Silent Hill 3 comes at number 9 on our list. When people think of what theme parks are, they usually think of a happy and thrilling adventure filled with experiences, fun rides, good food, entertaining mascots, but not in the case with Silent Hill 3. The amusement park is not as amusing as it is terrifying and gut-wrenching. If you visit here, you will come across the scariest of monsters, as well as being greeted by the infamous Robbie the Rabbit mascot of Lakeside Amusement Park, who looks to have devoured something or someone as it sat motionless staring into the void. I guess this is one way to set the tone for a horrifying experience that awaits you ahead. Midwich Elementary School from Silent Hill 1 comes in at number 8 on our list. Midwich Elementary School is a very special location because it made its debut in the Silent Hill 1 and briefly appeared again in Silent Hill 3. It's the first major location Harry Mason visits in Silent Hill 1 as he searches for his daughter Cheryl Mason. The school presents itself as a religious school through subtle tales by mounted crucifixes of Jesus in classrooms, leading players to believe it's either a Christian or a Catholic school. More importantly, it was home to Alessa Gillespie, a student who went there years ago and who was also discovered by her peers and teachers to have witch-like powers. As a result, she was abused and tortured to her demise. Her interpretation of how she viewed the evils and sins of the school transpired to the state it's in when Harry Mason comes across it. The scariest monsters can be found here, including the gray-like children wielded with short knives. Nothing is scarier than a place that is cursed, a place where it finds every reason and way possible to kill anything that enters it. The Baldwin Mansion from Silent Hill 2 Born from a Wish comes in at number 7 on our list. You can think of Born from a Wish as a DLC of Silent Hill 2 and a prequel to the main storyline. In Born from a Wish, you play as Maria and find yourself in the Baldwin Mansion, home of Ernest Baldwin and his late daughter, Amy. The mansion is also located adjacent to co-built apartments, Blue Creek, and Woodside. The story goes that Ernest's daughter fell out of a window and died on impact. As a result, Ernest suffered from grief and likely depression that led to him taking his own life. As you traverse throughout the mansion, you come across Ernest multiple times and speak to him from another room. 
I believe the most haunting part of this mansion was when Maria entered the room from which Ernest's voice came from, only to find out that there was nothing there the whole time. It was quite an eerie moment in the end, leaving players with chills running down their neck and spine. The Brookhaven Hospital from Silent Hill 2 comes in at number 6 on our list. Most people would rather not find themselves at a hospital because it either means you are sick, injured, or dying and require a major surgery. It is not a pleasant place to be in because it gives you a feeling of longing to be at home in a comfortable and safe place. Brookhaven Hospital is not just a hospital, but a very terrifying one, filled with the infamous bubblehead nurses, an encounter with Pyramid Head, and Maria following you around until she disappears just to reappear in a very bizarre area in the basement, followed by an eerie cutscene. Along with this area, you are left with anxiety as you maneuver throughout the floors and rooms with an everlasting threat looming over your shoulders. You will never look at a hospital the same way again after coming here. The Water Prison from Silent Hill 4, The Room, comes in at number 5 on our list. The Water Prison is a panopticon located near Toluca Lake, but the exact location and position is unknown. A panopticon, according to online sources, is an institutional building with an inbuilt system of control originated by the English philosopher and societal theorist Jeremy Betham in the 18th century. The concept is to provide corrections officers with the ability to observe all prisoners without the inmate's knowledge. Couple this with the fact that every corner of this prison in the game has a bunch of slugs, mumbling monsters, and the infamous and freaking creepy twin victim that chases you around. This makes the perfect recipe for horror. The Scarlet Fish Room from Silent Hill Homecoming comes in at number 4 on our list. Silent Hill Homecoming was the first Silent Hill I ever completed and I generally enjoyed it despite the backlash and hate it got. For me it retained the horrifying elements I like to see in horror games. I also was impressed by its graphics on the Xbox 360. Homecoming follows the journey of Alex Shepard, a soldier returning from war, to his hometown of Shepard's Glen where he finds the town in disarray and his younger brother missing. As he confesses his search to find his younger brother, he discovers more about the Order a cult, as well as the town's history and his own past. One of the most terrifying places in the game has to be the Scarlet Fitch Room, where Alex comes across Dr. Martin Fitch self-mutilating himself in the other world as he struggled to come to terms with sacrificing and murdering his daughter, Scarlet Fitch, to appease the gods and save himself from the curse of Silent Hill. After Alex handing him one of Scarlet's dolls, Dr. Fitch's runes start to open up more, letting out a bunch of blood and eventually giving birth to a giant doll that emerges from the ground. This doll is about 10 feet tall and had razor sharp teeth that ended up eating Dr. Fitch and letting out a terrifying scream before Alex is forced into having to kill it. Trust me, you would not want to be in the room with this thing. The prison jail room from Silent Hill 2 comes in at number 3 on our list. This is one of the most famous scenes in the Silent Hill franchise and for a good reason. The atmosphere, lighting, and scene itself are terrifying and very dreamlike paired with the quietness in the beginning when seeing Maria sitting staring at James almost like a mannequin. This scene starts to portray Maria and what she is to James and leads him to question reality. Is she alive? Is she Maria or is she Mary? What really happened to Mary? Wait, didn't Maria just die a moment ago? The voice acting and micro facial animations and change in posture and body language from Maria is spot on and really conveys to the player the turning point in the story. This is where the story starts to make sense of things with James and why he is experiencing the horrors of Silent Hill. I will never forget how terrifying this scene was, especially with the silence. The Historical Society from Silent Hill 2 comes in at number 2 on our list. The museum is filled with artifacts and picture frames of history contained in Silent Hill, surrounding areas and even alluding to malpractices that once took place there. The building was affected by the other world and is in shambles when James visits it. He finds a famous picture frame of Pyramid Head, which is a symbolic reference to the sins James committed. The truly horrifying part of the museum is what James uncovers by diving deeper through the holes to the other world, winding up in a prison labyrinth filled with monsters, sewer-like corridors, and a room filled with nooses and people hanging from them. This part in the game is the darkest depiction we see, in my honest opinion, and truly leaves players with an unforgettable experience. Before announcing the number one spot as the truly scariest place in Silent Hill, I just wanted to say thank you for stopping by to watch this video. It really means a lot to me and I appreciate sharing the experience with you. 
you enjoy this type of content, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell to get notified first when I post more content. With that being said, let's proceed. The candidate taking the number one spot on our list of the top 10 scariest locations in Silent Hill and what everybody has been dying to know will quite honestly surprise some. It was a choice I made for a damn good reason. This reason is what got me into the horror genre for all things horror related, whether it be the video games, movies, stories, or lore. It gave me an everlasting experience and core memory that I will never forget. It was 2004, I was 11 years old, I turned to an intriguing gray covered disc case with a man's distressed face imprinted on it. I thought it looked mysterious and interesting so I popped it into the PS1. I remember the haunting music and cutscene that played in the beginning. I even thought to myself that I had made the wrong choice to play a game this scary late at night. I also remember that music being very loud and I had to turn down the TV. The beginning of the game was okay, but the moment I entered the alleyways, everything changed. The sirens began going off, it got dark. And I knew something was wrong. The darkness surrounded me and as I slowly walked through the alleyways with a lit match, I came across a wheelchair with a free wheel making a creepy metal screeching sound, followed by catching the sight of a dead body covered up by blood-stained white cloth on a stretcher. Then the music and sounds started to pick up and sounded a lot more creepy. The tone became much more bizarre and the sound of metal hitting the fence grew louder. As I got to the opening of the gates, the scene began with Harry Mason approaching a mutilated figure on the fence followed by him asking, what is this? What is going on here? As soon as the cutscene ended, I was caught off guard by those little children with knives emerging from the darkness. The sounds they made paired with my panic truly made this part terrifying. I would have to say they sounded like dogs or monkeys. I have no idea, but it was not a good sound. I tried running away only to find out that the entrance I came in was closed off. Only then I knew there was no escape. Couldn't believe what was happening. I was shaking and couldn't find myself to move. I watched in complete shock as Harry Mason fell as if the game was about to tell me that I died with a game over screen. Immediately I turned off the console followed by having nightmares for several days. I couldn't go on to touch that game until I was older. If I had known that dying was part of the game sequence, I would have probably tried again. Not. This is the scene that set the stage for what defined psychological survival horror for me and would go down in history as the best moment and scariest location ever to be in Silent Hill. In conclusion, Silent Hill's scariest locations are more than just backdrops for the story. They are an integral part of the narrative. They are designed to evoke a particular emotion or response, to tap into our deep-seated fears and desires. And that's what makes them so effective. What truly sets Silent Hill apart is its ability to adapt into our deep-seated fears. It's not just about jump scares or gore, it's about creating an atmosphere that's both unsettling and thought-provoking. Silent Hill has always been a series that's more interested in exploring the human psyche than just relying on cheap thrills. So, what do you think is a scary Silent Hill location? Do you have a particular spot that always sends chills down your spine? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe for more content. I'll see you guys in the next one.